Okay, so this is kind of a short section. It's section 1.3, which is talking about the 12 basic functions. We're going to talk about what graphs can tell us, the 12 basic functions, and then analyzing functions graphically. Okay, so the first one we have is the identity function. We also know this as linear. And we have that equation f of x equals x. The interesting fact is this is the only function that acts on every real number by leaving it alone. The next one is the quadratic function, the quadratic, the squaring function, which we also call quadratic. And we have f of x equals x squared. The interesting fact for this one is the graph of this function called a parabola has a reflection property that's useful in making flashlights and satellite dishes. Okay, next we have the cubing function, which we also call cubic. We have f of x equals x cubed. Interesting fact, the origin is called a point of inflection for this curve because the graph changes curvature at that point. The reciprocal function, which we call the reciprocal function, um, and we have it's f of x equals 1 over x. Interesting fact, this curve is called a hyperbola, and it also has a reflection property that is useful in satellite dishes. Okay, next we have the square root function. Sometimes you'll see this called radical. Oh, I should go back. Reciprocal we also call rational. Just so you know all these names can be interchanged. So we're talking about square root or radical. f of x equals the square root of x. The interesting fact is put any positive number into your calculator. Take the square root, then take the square root again then take the square root again and so on. Eventually you'll always get to one. Okay, next one is exponential, um, which is f of x equals e to the x. So this is um, the natural, we're using, not natural log, um, we're using e. So um, the number e is an irrational number, like pi, that shows up in a variety of applications. The symbols e and pi were brought into popular by um, the great Swiss mathematician. Okay, so that's exponential. Natural logarithm. So this is f of x equals natural log of x. The interesting fact, this function increases very slowly. If the x and y axis were both scaled with unit lengths of one inch, you would have to travel more than two and a half miles to get along the curve just to get a foot above the x-axis. Okay, then we have, we get into trig, so we have sine, f of x equals sine of x. Um, this function and the sinus cavities in your head derive their names from a common root, the Latin word for bay. This is due to the 12th century mistake made by Robert of Chester, who translated a word incorrectly from an Arabic manuscript. Lots of interesting facts today. Okay, the cosine function is f of x equals cosine of x. Interesting fact, the local extrema of cosine function occur, occur exactly at the zeros of the sine function and vice versa. Absolute value function, so we have y equals absolute value of x. Um, I kind of like that they put the abs of x because that tells you what you're finding on the calculator if you're trying to input it into your calculator. Um, you go to math and then over to number and you'll see the abs, that stands for absolute value. Interesting fact, this function has an abrupt change of direction, a corner at the origin, while our other functions are all smooth on their domains. Then we have greatest integer function. So this is also called a step function in our interesting fact. In, yeah, the function has a d jump dis discontinuity at every integer value of x. Similar looking functions are called step functions. And last, we have the logistic function. So this, oh, I didn't I'll circle our equations here. Okay, interesting fact, there are two horizontal asymptotes, the x-axis and the line y equals one. This function provides a model for many applications in biology and business. So logistic graphs um, are often used when we're talking about like spread of a virus um, or an illness or something like that because you're gonna eventually reach a maximum value. So there you go. Okay, so example one, looking for domains. Which of these functions has a domain, the set of all real numbers except zero? Which function is it? So if you look at your 12 functions, 
you're looking for where do you have a graph that does not have a value at zero, but at every other number. So that's actually going to be the reciprocal function. Because if you look at this, it's going to hit every x value except for zero. We have an asymptote at zero. So f of x equals one over x is our one function that has the domain is negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity. Okay. And our last example, it has graphed the function. Let's graph this negative x squared minus one. So that means we're shifting it down one and it's going to open down. Okay, so there's my parabola and we wanna answer the following questions. On what intervals is the function increasing? So again, we're using x values. So our, our x value, our graph is increasing until we get to zero, an x value of zero. So we would say it's increasing from negative infinity to zero. On what interval is it decreasing? It's decreasing from zero to infinity. Is the function odd, even, or neither? So remember we look at symmetry to determine if it's odd, even, or neither. So this one has y-axis symmetry, which would mean that it is an even function. Does the function have any extrema? Yes has a maximum at zero, negative one. Okay, and then how does the graph relate to the graph of the basic function y equals x squared? So we know that it is, so we're basically, it's asking us what are the transformations? So we are going to have a reflection over the x-axis, and we're also going to shift down one. Okay, so that is section 1.3.